All right, I'm gonna get recording. Hi there, everyone. Great to see you all come on. Thanks for joining us. Um, I have, Jenny and I have come together to create this really powerful presentation for you on the most powerful network women, uh, the most powerful women in network marketing. It's a recap from an event that Jen and I attended online. Um, a little while back now, hey Jen, a couple of weeks ago, and we just felt super excited to share with you all. And um, yeah, and I hope um, that you've got your notepads out, got everything ready to go, and um, we will get cracking. So if you can all see the slideshow, correct? Jen, is that right? Yeah, okay, great. So I'd like to um, just introduce Um, Jenny Drew with you guys and Jenny is a silver in Young Living and she's been a powerhouse with me um, sharing and caring doing lots of um, you know le learning about the business together and growing and developing ourselves in network marketing and in personal development so you know a lot of what we got out of this most powerful women in network marketing event was personal development is really key it's going to be the number one thing that we grow um, along as our business grows and, and i think eric eric worry who was the host of this was really really um yeah just a powerhouse in sharing that um yep angela no worries that's cool so jen yeah you, um I've got the next slide. So, would you guys would you like to share with us a little bit more about what your overall view of this event? Yeah, I can. Um, or I could even launch into how Eric Worry summed up the whole event. Yeah, um, because I think that's really what made an impression on me too. Was when Eric Worry summed up. There he is. Um, the, he's the author of GoPro which was a real turning point for me in network marketing and just understanding the, the seven basic skills. So um, GoPro was really pivotal for me and probably Ra too, you'd agree. So Eric Worre put together this event. So when he summed up the event, he said the biggest secret of the million dollar earners and leaders was that... Um, no matter where you're at in your business, whether you're just brand new or you've been in it for years, it's what's more important than your opportunity, than your product, than your comp plan, than your skills, than anything you have to offer is the relationships that you create with people. He said, care more about people. That really has to be the focus. And if the relationships are there, you will have people's trust and you'll have connection for life. And really, I think that summarised the whole of the event for me. Did you want to add anything, yeah, Ra? Right, no, that's really cool. I love where it worry. He's just he's awesome. And, um, and the energy behind the event, I mean, you can go on um, YouTube and watch little bits and pieces of it too and videos that were, you know, small sections, but he's actually... This whole event is now being um, sold in a video series pack for a pretty high price. And you can attend it next year. It's going to be around the same time. And um, there are tickets available now online. So pretty cool event. So thanks, Jen. So Eric Worry um, has a partner who, a wife, who we'll um, talk about in here as well. She's pretty cool too, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So what are some of the biggest secrets, Jen, of the million dollar earners and leaders in network marketing? I bet you love my smell of selling. But... <laughs> what, is there a mistake there? I can't see it. Yeah. Um, well, his biggest secret, when he interviewed the people, when he interviewed the women who'd been presenting, um, he really said that over and over again, it was about your ability to build friendships, collect friends above anything else. So that really was the biggest secret. It was about the focus on relationships. Now just flick to the next one, right? We'll see what the next slide is. Okay, great. So Lisa Grossman was one of the first key speakers that came on. She was great. Want to share with us about her, Jen? Yes. So 
Um, what really impacted me from Lisa was, again, this emphasis on caring about people and being really interested in them. So I'll jump to that point first. Be more interested in people rather than being interesting. And then she talked about the way to do that. She said people walk around with a giant bucket that they're constantly filling. All of their life stuff is in this bucket. And it means that when you encounter somebody, their bucket is so full, they can't possibly hear anything that you have to share with them until some of their bucket gets emptied. And she said, if you can be that person to help start to empty their bucket, and what that involves is just being there and listening. And in that way, you're helping a person to empty some of their bucket so that they have space in their lives to be able to hear a message that you're bringing them. Yeah. She also emphasised helping people to find their path to happiness, regardless of what that path is going to look like. People will be impacted and remember you, that you were interested in helping them find happiness, whether it involved you or not, and that it truly is um, the being of service that makes a difference in our lives and to other people. Yeah, yeah, she was amazing. Cool. And the next lady we have? Milan Jensen. Yeah. So um, the quote, so before I came on, I was just writing uh, short phrases of each, uh, of each woman um, summing up, I guess, what I got from them. And so Lisa Grossman was care more about people, be interested in them. For Milan Jensen, what I wrote was, when women gather, magical things happen. Yeah. So that was really the message I got for her. Very woman-centred, very much about um, helping each woman find the wonder woman in themselves and then going out to find other wonder women around them and locking arms with women and creating a strong emotional connection. And she said, that changes the world when we focus on that emotional connection that we can have with one another. So I see her slide there says, deepen the relationships of the women around you and commit to no blame. I can't see what's written there. No something, no complain culture. So to have an attitude of non-judgment and really connect emotionally with, with other women. Um, I'll see if there was anything yeah, that's else. that's really great. She's... Um Super cool lady. It was really powerful. And what I loved about all these women, which we didn't recap before, but they were all from different network marketing um, companies. That's what we didn't share before. So there was many, many different um, network marketing companies that were represented there, including Young Living. So I'll show you some photos from, from, um, from that as we go into the slides. So. Yeah. I'll just add for Milan Jensen, she was one of many, many women who talked about the importance of gratitude. And she had this little ritual that every morning she wakes with gratitude and with each step she takes to the bathroom, she takes a step and says, thank you, thank you, thank you with each step. And she gets to the mirror and she puts her hands on her hips and says, Wonder Woman, at herself in the mirror. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. He yeah. starts the day with gratitude, strength, and laughter. Yeah. Yeah. And look at her happy face, you know? Yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty awesome. It's great. All right, cool. And now, Denise Chanel, I just checked that I, um, I didn't do a picture of Denise. So she had a really powerful story, didn't she, Jen? Jen? She did. Yeah, yeah. And I, f I really resonated with her. She talked very much about authenticity and about embracing your fear. And she talked about being very frightened, but remembering being very frightened as a little girl. And, um, and that really did, yeah, I guess, I guess it drove her in a way to look at how she could conquer that. Um, and so with each thing now that she does, she recognises when she's frightened or nervous and she says, thank you, fear because the fear is telling me that I'm in the right place and I'm about to move forward and grow. So I really like that. Um, she developed two lists, or she showed in her presentation two columns. One was called In Fear, 
and the other one was called Focused Outward. And she talked about moving from the fear column to the focusing outward column um, so that you can express yourself with authenticity. And she also said that authenticity, when you be you, it gives permission to other people that they can be themselves. She also talked about the gift of true listening. So um, being with somebody without any agenda yeah. and yeah. that that really is what forms the connection. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, this, and I like that she also said one of her things was that network marketing is the business that usually reflects where we need to grow. So just be you. And the more you you are, it gives people, other people the freedom to be themselves and trust develops. Because people just want to know themselves, you know? Yeah. 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 Do you want me to say what her two columns were, Ra? Um, no, that's fine. I think that, um, yeah, I think what you've given is really powerful there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's basically moving from fear, from a space of fear and being really um, nervous and, oh. and separate to moving into trust and connecting with other people. Yeah, and one of the things that I've gotten here, it says dive into courage, be you, lead with love, do your business from a space of joy. Really yeah. cool. Yeah, it's great. Marie. And she actually, um, she had a really great interview, series of interview questions in the coffee shop that she did with people. So I've yeah. got those questions written down. If um, Jen, you want me to share those? Yeah, go through those. I have them here too. If you guys want to write them down, what I'm intending on doing is with this PowerPoint is loading it up into Love Biz. So you guys can grab this PowerPoint and actually go through it yourself if you want to take the notes again. So one of the first things that um, was there in the interview is that um, you really want to be able, when you're complete with the person, like really when you know you've been successful with them, so she actually had like one of the ways she built her business was that every lunch hour she met with people in their lunch hour and, um, and built her business that way. So these were some of the questions that she felt were like that she felt it was really successful if she went back to the office and her normal job with these questions answered about those pe people. So the first one is do you know your prospect better than almost anyone in his or her own life? That's question one. And you know, this is really, you know, these are real true service questions. So do you know your prospect better than almost anyone in his or her own life? You never think about that now, the people that you connected, it's really powerful. Question two, do you know the reasons why your company will be a perfect fit for them? So that was, do you know the reasons why your company will be a perfect fit for them? Pretty cool. Do you know what their dreams are? It's question three. You know, this could be in an hour conversation, half hour conversation. Do you know what their dreams are? Question four, do you know if they're willing to achieve those goals? Which is a really good question because a lot of people have dreams and yet they're not willing to make sacrifices or willing to go there. Happy to dream, but to take an action, that's a different story. So do you know if they're willing to achieve those goals? Question five, do you know what is missing in their life and why? So do you know what's missing in their life and why? Question six, and do you know if you want to partner with that person? And I thought that was awesome. Do you know if you want to partner with that person? Because really this is about getting to know them better. Than almost anyone else you know in their life so I really love those questions they're awesome mm. um, yeah. any any queries on those or did you guys need to me to repeat that at all all right so we'll move on from Denise dive into courage be you lead with love do your business from a space of joy big thing from her which is great yeah all right. Yeah. Lisa DeMeo. Okay. She's glad. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so what I got from her, the, if I just summed it up in one sentence, she talked about people are buying a relationship with you. 
So um, going back, he talked about prospecting is actually making someone an offer. Um, yeah, she said some lovely things actually. She said things like go where it's dark and shine the light there. Mm. And whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. But her, her main message I think was about realizing that people are buying a relationship with you. That's how important it is. They're not buying the company, they're not buying the product, they're buying us. Yeah. And they so they have to be impacted enough to say, I want to be with you. Yeah. And I relate that to being Jen, like, you know, every day waking up being the best version of yourself you could possibly be, you know? Yeah. You really just acknowledge yourself. No matter what, you just aim to be the best version of yourself you can be every day. Yeah. 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 And, you know, one big thing I got from her, and this was key for me, she said there is nothing different to you and these top earners. It's the same heart. And it may right. just be that they know more skills, have a bit more courage, but it's the same heart. There's nothing different. I really like that. And work on what you were good at. Yeah. Yeah. And I also remember her saying, go find the people who will say yes to this. Don't worry about yeah. the no. Keep moving on to finding the yeses. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, she's, it said too, like in network marketing, she said network marketing is really figuring out how we can make the world a better place. I like that. And that mm. was really cool. Like, to, you know, and if you really believe in your product and we have such a foundational, amazing product in Young Living, that if we really believe we can make the world a better place, that's what we'll walk with. And that product will just come through us. It's really mm. cool. Um, yeah. yeah. And another thing was everyone deserves to have and live a life that they choose. Money does matter. You deserve to make a million dollars because the world can't survive on poor people to give back. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, that's quite cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 So anything else, Jen and Lisa? Uh, well, I noticed the first point there was about giving. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, she was big on that too. She just said train and teach and keep giving yourself away. Keep giving yeah. what you have away. Share everything you learn. Yeah. And it's all that giving that makes people want to be with you. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the point about giving. Yeah. So this, even what you guys are learning today, I really um, invite you to call up some of your team members and share with them what you learnt on this today and offer them to go watch the YouTube video. You know, anyone you've connected, just say, go watch it. It's going to be uploaded. Usually it's uploaded an hour after every webinar. So it'll be uploaded by 2 p.m. today. And we can, oh, sorry, by 3 p.m. today when we complete. So, um, yeah, so you can watch it from any time on. I invite you those little key pointers and notes. Take your top five and share them with your team in a phone call. Yeah, your special people. So what else was there? That's it on Lisa, really. We could talk about yeah. her pages. There's so much stuff, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. for all of the women. Pages yeah. and pages. Yeah. A lot of these women, I just want to make no, a lot of these women had more, like, like three plus children, Lisa's one of them. So they built their network marketing business whilst being mums. And um, I really liked learning and listening to that. And a lot of them made their children their why, which is really cool. So, you know, acknowledge that if you've got children and it's something that you're using as an excuse to hold you back, she said, you know, real mothers will just give to their community. They'll learn and they'll give it away and they'll be the best version of themselves they can be every day. I was like, yep, that's cool. Mm. So, yep, that's it. Now let next person. The next person, Esther Spina. Now I did take an image of her. Women make powerful leaders. Um, Jen, we'll go back to the first slide. Okay. So. Um, Again, my, my one-line summary from Esther would be that this work takes time and experience. Um, so you can't rush it. It takes time and it takes experience and experience comes with time. And that was 
very reassuring for me just to hear, you know, it's just one foot in front of the other. It takes time. It takes experience. And I like that she talked about not discarding your past experiences. All the things you've done in your life up till now have brought you to here and will be valid experiences that you'll be drawing on. And I really liked, I appreciated hearing that as well. Network marketing takes time and experience. And then she showed some video footage of um, an elderly lady who became a marathon winner in her later years. Yeah. And the three key points that she spoke about in her interview after she, um, I guess she emerged from the, the channel. She swam across a channel, I think, didn't she? Um, and she spoke about how she'd done it. And her first point was never, ever give up. Number two, you're never too old to chase your dreams. And number three, it looked like a solitary sport, but it was a team effort. Yeah, I like that. Esther, yeah, Esther Spina really thought, wow, those three points, they sum up um, the key points for network marketing. Never, ever give up. You're never too old to chase your dreams. And it looks like a solitary sport, but it's a team effort. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Awesome. So, you know, she said also to invest in yourself. And successful people do what, you know, will do what unsuccessful people will not do. So you really get, you know, it's going to take something, you guys. It's really going to take something. And it, and it does, hey, Jen? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it takes something. And um, really ask yourself, do you want to do this? And if not, it's okay. You don't make yourself wrong. But if you do then call all of your team leaders and really, you know, dig and learn as much as you can. But it's a good question. So um, anything else there? No, that's all oh, I have. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So Danny Robinson, she's this lady in the centre here. And um, she, was, she was great. She was an older woman and, um, yeah, just had... Little bits of gold. So, Jen, you want to share that, Danny? Yeah. So, she, yeah, she, I took lots of notes from her, but the main thing was the four types of people in network, network marketing. I just have to find my page. So, excuse my fluttering pages here. Um, so, she talked about if you can make the distinctions between four different types of people, it can just help you know where to put your energy. So the first type is the consumer, consumers. So they joined because they want the best, uh, the products at the best prices. So they're probably just going to be members and continue to love the products. Connectors are the next type. Connectors are the life of the party. So they'll connect and join lots of people, but not always follow up. So their job is as connectors. The third type, builders. They want to build a business and they do the skills. So they're really solid part of your team. And then the fourth type are leaders. And she described them as being like eagles. So they have a perspective and a vision. And they say that with or without you, I'm doing this thing. So, so they have a very, very clear vision of where they're going. So I just she, want to like share on that was that what I've seen is that some people will create every day a pyramid of the and they'll write the names, you know, their top people sectioned in these four sections that Jenny just mentioned, and those are the people that they call on their day. So just a little recap on that. That's just something that was a bit of an add-on from what I what I received from her too. So it can give you using that um, little distinguished, you know, distinct yeah, like sharing all those different types of people that are in your team, you can um, create that as your action plan for the day and who you're going to catch up with. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah, yeah. And probably you'll spend more time on your leaders and builders and less on your connectors and consumers. Yeah. Yeah, so I like that. Um, what else did I get from her? Oh, yeah, she was really quite fun the way she talked about how she uh, really went friend finding whenever she got to a new town, she'd go friend finding and she even knocked on doors and did things like set up a display in the back of her car in shop, shopping car parks. She had some wild ideas 
And she said, the four most powerful words that will come out of your mouth are, I can do that. And she said she had so many ideas and she'd say to herself, I can do that. I can do that. <laughs> and really had a lot of courage and just guts, I'd say. Yeah. And, um, and she talked about creating a warm market out of a cold market. And I really like that too. And that's just about making friends. And she talked about the three foot radius around you. So you um, start chatting to anyone in a three foot radius around you and be warm and friendly and just make friends wherever you go. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. She'd been in network marketing for a long time, Denny. Didn't she? Oh, well, I'm not, I guess so. All of them had, I think. Some of them had been seven years had. plus. I think Adam Green and his wife, they were the newbies on there. Okay. They were on a panel, so they were, they were the least amount of time. But most of them, eight years to 35, 40 years, like a long time in network marketing. And different yeah. companies too, you know? Yeah. Yeah, true. And then built right up high to a company and then, you know, moved on, did it again, new company, lots of different things. So, yeah. 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 All right. I'll also, I'll just add one more thing that Denny said that I liked. When you're chatting to these, all these people who are coming into your three foot radius, um, she said, just ask questions, strike up conversations, ask questions. She said, if you ask enough about someone else, eventually they'll ask about you. Yeah. And I like that too. Yeah. Awesome. She also used to have a once a week luncheon where she'd invite people to come and um, come and hear about her product. Okay. Well, yeah. I like that idea. That's cool. That sounds fun. It does sound fun, doesn't it? Yeah. She called it an executive luncheon. And so she'd invite all the people that she was meeting and she'd say, come along to my, my weekly luncheon. And she'd share about her product. Awesome. Awesome, yeah. Jen. So what, who was next was Kimmy Brooke. And I just realised that, um, yeah, the images were different from her. So what I'm going to do is just bring up my Kimmy Brooke images because she was, she was fantastic, Kimmy. So much fun. And one of the biggest things that I got, you know, that, that I received from Kimmy was this, I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited. <laughs> Yeah. Look at that. She's so yeah. cool. So um, yeah. I'm just gonna create yeah, do you wanna share a little bit a bit about Kimmy Brooke and I'm just gonna bring up some images. Okay. Well, um, who she is for a start. Who she she's the wife oh often I used to have my four year career right here, but I don't have it. So the author of the four year career and we actually have our own young living version of that book, um, is Richard Bliss Brook. And that's Kimmy's husband. So Kimmy Brooks' message, and she's like a little ball of energy, isn't she? She bounced on the stage and, yep, yeah, I'm excited, I'm excited. And her message is remember to have fun. So, um, yeah, that really, she had people look at all the parts of their lives and just really check, check in. Are they remembering to have fun? Mm. That was her main message. Yeah, that was really nice. And choosing fun, choosing fun, you know, choosing fun in follow-up, choosing fun at events, choosing yeah. fun with your team, mm. choosing fun with yourself. Yeah. 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 Really I, that. So, you know, I'm just going to share um, some images that I've got of her. And okay. she, yeah, she was just, oh, she was just awesome. Like, I really loved her. She... She was bouncing when you see this image in a sec, you'll see um you'll see that she was just she was super energetic and she is um Eric Worry's wife or lady of course. No, no, Richard Briss Richard oh, Bliss. Richard Bliss look, that's right, yeah, thank you. Um so you can see her little her thing there. She was just she was bouncing. She was really great. And um and I love this one too, that um what was your like the next um you know, the next thing that she shared was what was your, um, like, what's your story around fun, which was something that I, um, that I mm. thought was really, yeah, significant that she, you know, she, and I'll, I'll show you this because we, you know, we all have different stories about what is fun for us 
um, you know, and I don't know how to have fun or I love having fun. I'm, you know, I'm a professional, so I'm serious and I don't have fun or it's stupid to have fun or I'm an introvert and I can't and I'm, you know, I'm too shy. Whatever stories you've got around it, you know, or I don't have time. Actually just forgetting all of that and just what's fun to you, you know? So, Jen, you know, what's fun for you? Something that's fun for you. Mm, dancing. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I didn't know that about you. That's awesome. Right. Yeah. So something that's fun for me is um, he's bouncing on the tramp when I'm making phone calls. So I put my headset on and I go out into the yard and I like, hey, you know, especially if it's a serious, to someone that's serious or that I'm really quite nervous about talking to or, someone that I get lots of energy from, I'll go and jump on the trampoline, a huge spring-free tramp while I'm talking to them on the phone. It's pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> and I just come in and I'm pumped after I do that, after that phone call. So, you know, have a look at what it is. Just, you know, let go about, let go of your current story around fun and actually just do something. Like think of something today that you could do. Pretty cool. So, you know, mm. Kimmy, yeah, she was just, yeah, she was really legendary. I really liked all her stuff. Um, and she did, she did talk about, yeah, she did talk about being on time and choosing fun in your follower, which I thought was really big, you know, creating it to be what was going to be um, enjoyable for you, which I think is something that we take this a little bit too serious sometimes. So mm -hmm. she said, choose fun in your follow-up, you know, and really just enjoy yourself. And, um, and make it fun for you. Like one of my favourite things is going down to my favourite health food cafe down here and I'll, I'll just aim to meet people at there or I'll go out to my one on the Gold Coast that's one of my favourites so that it's an excuse for me to go and have a cuppa and go hang out and have fun. Go for a walk, you know, scheduling walks on the beach with your um, new prospects, whatever it is for you, you know. So I love that. So even you guys who are listening or watching this, think of something today that you can add in that creates fun for you and in, in your business and in just in your life even. Adding in one more thing a day, even one more thing a week. So, um, yeah, that's what I wanted to share about Kimmy Brook. Mm. Anything else there, Jen? No, that sums it up well, I think. Okay, Did great. you have other people that you wanted to share about? Did you want to talk about Gloria Mayfield Banks or anyone else that you really loved? Yeah, I did. I did. So um, also one of the people that I wanted to share about was, and we'll do, that, do this now, was um, Eric's wife, mm. um, Marina. So I think you guys can, share, can see the screen. So, um, Marina was, oh, it's logged off, sorry. And now it's going to go back to the yeah. start, but that's not very good. Yeah, Marina, she was awesome. And she, you know, she really talked about um, that women control more than half the investment wealth in the world. So, she was just talking about the percentage of um, women who are bringing in the income now and... You know, a lot of women are starting to be some of, you know, the high um, leaders and network marketing is one of the company, uh, one of the main areas in business that women can actually succeed in income um, compared to men. So just ignore the name here, but she, you know, this wasn't Kimmy Brook, but where women fare best and worse, she really showed how men, many of the highest paying professions, women's salaries on a percentage of men's are lowest. So that, I thought that was really interesting. If you can see, you know, um, advertising and network marketing is up there as well. Like these, you know, HR specialists, anyone else, the comparative, if a male and a female is working, they'll, the female get paid lower. All these other all businesses. So, you know, that brought up something for me and I've heard it before and before, but it was really interesting to actually see it as a statistic. And to know that even if you put the same amount of hours in and study, you know, as a dentist, look, a female dentist, she'll only get paid 74% compared to her male counterpart. So pretty interesting. And um, 
So they're saying, if you look at this last point on this page, some estimate that by 2030, that women will control as much as two thirds of the nation's wealth. And that's in America. So it's really on the increase. And um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. And a lot of women are choosing network marketing. Pretty cool. And mm. something else that um, she shared as well was, there was lots of little bits and pieces that I wanted to show, but up here it said, somebody once said, educate a woman and you'll educate a family. I'm saying empower a woman to become an entrepreneur and you will create an entire family of entrepreneurs. Women entrepreneurship is, in the, is the need of the world right now. So network marketing surely is a much better option to create power and su powerful and successful women entrepreneurs. And I think why they talked about that was because network marketing seems to have a lot of the value set of women, you know, building relationships and connection and communication um, and nurture and giving are usually very high in a women's values list in a general sense for females. So network marketing really connects visions to what you create in your life. It's not just a dog dollar that I'm, you know, or a, um, like a dog job that you're just really not finding fulfillment in. In network marketing, you can fulfill your values and fulfill on your, your dreams um, from a value, from a place of value for yourself. So that was, you know, something that she shared that I found really valuable. Um, mm. Now, another person I really wanted to talk about was Kathleen Degelman. Jenny, did you, um, did you have any notes on Kathleen? Did you watch her at all? No, I didn't see her. Yeah, so, you know, she asked these questions about, you know, and these are great, these are just key questions for yourself. She calls them 10 game changers. So, um, what are you carrying around with you? These are questions to ask yourself. But to make a decision to change your money habits. And I'll run you guys through a little meditation that she did on this in a minute. So number three, change your intentions for your business. Four, expand your knowledge about finances. And this is what I'm currently doing at the moment. So number five, review your cash in and out. Like really be serious about it. Number six, create a debt snowball, which she talked about. Choose your smallest debt. You know, she said, have a look at all the debts you've got. You know, whether it be $20 to that friend or $200 to that friend, whatever they are, line them up. Could be $20,000 on your mortgage, whatever it is, or $300,000. Um, and she said, just create them in a line. Choose your smallest one and pay that back. Knock that one off the list. And slowly work your way through from the smallest right up to the biggest so that you're knocking, you know, your um, debt out of the way, right? So you get to just your biggest one that's left and that takes a bit more time. And she said, you're investing. She, re you know, she said, you choose a percentage that you can invest based upon what you're earning and you invest in getting rid of your debts. So that's number one. Number seven thing she said was hire an accountant. Create, number eight was create a net worth statement. Number nine was play the prosperity game. And this is what I'll share with you guys as well. Number 10, teach your kids the game of making money. So Kathleen, her whole talk was on money. It was really powerful. So this back to question two, make a decision to change your money habits. So she um, did a meditation. She said, shut. so if you guys just want to do this with me now, it's going to be just about two minutes. So just shut your eyes right now and imagine money as a person. Imagine money as a person. So what does he look like? What does she look like? See them ahead of you. What do they look like? What are they wearing? How are they walking? Do they have any, you know, what's their hair look like? What are they, you know, what kind of stuff do they have on them? Are they walking with other people? Are they on their own? See them ahead of you walking towards you. And as they're walking towards you, you just want to start to know how you're starting to feel. Now they're walking towards you, they're getting closer, they're getting closer. And this is Mr. Money or Mrs. Money. You know, what, what are you starting to feel? And as they walk, they're walking past you, right next to you, and they walk past completely. What's there for you? How do you feel? 
So this one, you can come back now. And if any of you are on mute, then take yourself off mute. But if I'd love a, like a little like 20 second share on what was your image? And um, I'll share mine. It was pretty interesting. When I did this the first time, I had this really huge, big, humongous, you know, Negro guy who was just dripping gold. And um, he had a, a trail of women behind him, you know, just these gorgeous things. And um, he just, when he walked, notes fell off him. And I, he, I saw him coming and as he came towards me, he completely like, he just had enough, like I was like invisible, it was completely like an invisible wall. And he just walked straight past me, like completely and um, did not even notice me one bit. And all I felt like doing was just shrinking and being very small, just disappearing. And I felt like I was nothing. So that was really interesting for me. I'm like, wow, I'm really fearful of money. Oh my God. So that was great. So, you know, that, I did that. And I like when we watch this um, thing and I've been working on that and, and creating my Mr. Money to be a different image. So Jen, do you want to share or girls want to share? Yeah, I can share mine. Yeah, mine, mine was male, um, a man in a suit, very yeah. corporate looking. Yeah. And um, this came towards me. I felt no connection, no warmth, nothing. He just walked past and kept going and I sort of felt a bit repulsed. Yeah. Interesting. That's not <laughs> sounding very good either, is it? No. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's great. So you might want to do this number nine that I'll, I'll explain number nine in a minute, prosperity again. So that, that can actually help to transform. It's transforming mine at the moment. So now mm. Emma and Sunny, would you like to share your imagery? Um, yeah, I saw a very gorgeous looking um, girl and looked a little bit like Marina with same, similar sort of hair, quite big blonde blush hair, uh, yeah. wearing a white suit and lots of diamonds, gorgeous rings and just gorgeous earrings and lots of beautiful things and, and a big smile and looking very confident. And as, I, um, as she approached me, I felt a little bit <gasps> intimidated and then she gave me a big smile and put her hand out. And then can you give a hug? And that was it. Look at that. That's prosperity. Wow, Sunny. <laughs> well, Sunny, and you're super close, my girl. I love it. Well done. So, I know, but um, yeah, I, I embraced it, yeah. Yeah, that's so cool. And Emma, what did you find? Um, I had a kind of trouble imagining it and um, but what I did see was like a see-through person. So I don't know if that's to do with having trouble imagining it. Yep. So you just saw a see-through person and, and when they came towards you, yeah. what was the feeling like? Yeah. Um, just neutral. I didn't really feel anything. Yep. Yep. Interesting. Yeah, or maybe like a distance. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like almost no relationship to it at all. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, and this is something, you can do this again and again and again. I thought it was a really cool little imagery. I've done it with quite a few people now. I love it. Like, what does your Mr. or Mrs. Money look like? Um, so, back to number nine, playing the prosperity game. Now, this is something that I went and Googled. It's an Abraham um game and you can go online abraham hicks you can go online and find up um sign up there's a free sign up about it and they'll send an email to you every day with the amount and mm -hmm. you can fill it out what i decided to do is just go google the amounts that they suggested and then i'm just playing it myself because i don't need any more emails my mate inbox is so full so i just got my i got a money journal out and play the prosperity game. And the amounts that I used that were recommended, there was about four different recommended amounts, but I just decided to double mine. And I'm playing a 21 day span. I'm on day 19 at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. and, the, and it starts where you take, so you're using um, imaginary money and every day you get a check with this imaginary amount and you've got to spend it. And you're looking at what you're spending it on. And I mean, the last amount that I had to spend last night was 2.6 million. 
in a day. And I was like, oh my God, what would I spend 2.6 million on today? As you know, because I, for 18 days before that, I'd be spending these huge amounts. I kind of was like, I've got nothing. So that's what she said. When you play the prosperity game, you start to get smart about how and what you would manage your money and what it would look like. Because if you've got that much coming in in a day, where are you going to put it? What's the purpose? How is it going to impact the world? Where's it going to go? You know, we spend mm-hmm. most of our lives chasing the damn thing and then when we've got it on a platter, what do we actually do with it? So she said, here's the amounts. You might want to write these down. Your first day is 100. Second day is 200. Third day is 400. Fifth day is 800. Sixth day is 1600, right? And on and on and so on and so on. You just double it each mm-hmm. time. So you can choose another, another game all the way up, right? You can choose 21 days. You can choose 30 days. You can increase it like 100, 200, 500, 1,000, 1,500, 12, um, 2000 you can go up in those types of increments if you want to um and it doesn't really matter as long as it's increasing that's what i noticed and it increasing and it starts see this kathleen when she was talking about it she's like i start she still plays the prosperity game now she said she starts at ten thousand, and i'm like well and she's a multi multi millionaire this lady um and so she you know her her base is ten thousand. so if you feel more comfortable having your base is 500 or a thousand or you know whatever your base level is i was um yeah i just decided to start at the beginning so that if prosperity game is awesome so every night before i go to sleep i get out my diary and i you know i started to learn about how to divide my money up and um and what percentages i wanted to go to eat Account. I wrote my 40 year plan. It started all of this implementation, you know, and my intentions around why I wanted to earn a high income and where that would go and what it would look like. So, Kathleen had a really powerful impact on my finances. She was brilliant. Wow. Uh, and what else is there about her? So, da, da, da. she just kept, said, keep expanding your knowledge on finances, like read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Total Money Makeover, all of those books. Um, hire a good network marketer, like a good accountant, because it'll pay for itself. Um, anything else? No, nope, that's kind of that. Ra, see, yeah. number one, when she says, what are you carrying around with you, does she mean the amount of cash you're carrying? No, so she means, and it, someone else reviewed this, and it's actually the first, like, one of the first chapters in... Um, in um, Kawasaki's book, like which Dad Poor Dad, they all talk about. Um, they talk about what money programming do you have? Okay. Like, okay. is money to you something like if you go back to your childhood? What is the first kind of thoughts and situations that you remember about money? Like one of mine was money doesn't grow on trees. So my family, we had a lot of wealth. There was Dad was earning a huge income. Yet they lived like hippies on a yacht and really, you know, traded a lot. They didn't want to use their money. So um, what happened with that was um, it was like we were poor. It was kind of like that. Yet dad earned 500, you know, thousand a year. Like he had a lot of money. Just didn't know how to, what to do with it. Um, and I think he'd know, known only to kind of hold back. He just held back a lot. So, you know, one of the, the biggest things that I remember my mum saying to me was money doesn't grow on trees. And so what I've decided to do was to get some paper notes. And I just decided this, woke up with this idea the other morning, um, get some paper notes and get one of my pot plants, put it inside and peg paper notes to it and be like, how yes, money does grow on trees. Right. <laughs> and every day I'd see that it's changing my patterning. Another way you can do it is write it up or draw it or paint it. And look at what that statement was. Was it like, um, oh, whatever your statements are. So, Jen, can you think of one that you remember from your childhood? Um, hmm. No, not straight away. I'd have to think of it. Yeah. It's good just to look at you guys. Have a look at that statement. And because that's set you up for where you're, you know, what you're carrying around, you know, now. What your, how your parents dealt with money. What your childhood was like. How... Your parents talked about money, what they interacted, you know, was mm. it was it powerful or was it not? So 
yeah, really cool things she had. So that was the main start. Um, the main thing I got, I also got, she said, you know, create a net worth statement, which was all of your assets and like your net worth and then update it twice a year, which is something I thought that was pretty cool. And um, yeah, that was it for her. She was great. So the only other person that I had was, um, was Gloria Mayfield Banks. And I'll just do a quick, she was, she was a phenomenon, that woman. She's one of my faves. I actually watched her videos three times, like in a session, because I loved her so much. She was freaking awesome. And um, I'll just go and find some of the images for you. I didn't get a chance to put them up on the slideshow, but she's, yeah, she was a powerhouse. So, um, and I think that was part of what I really loved about, about her was that she came from a place of just being like one of those amazingly super powerful women, like really, really powerful women. So, um, yeah, just having a look. So one of the biggest ones I got, one of her biggest quotes um, was, and one of the biggest things that she chose to share with everyone was confidence. She said, you're, you know, your biggest number one game changer in life is having the confidence. It's like the if factor for those who excel. excel. So confidence is the platform for charisma. She grew up in a home where her dad said, you know, if you, like, if you are the best, I'm just going to find it here. If you... Are, you know, if you're going to be the best, like the bit to be the best version of yourself is the greatest thing you can be because then you can be the best mother, you can be the best wife, you can be the best business partner, you can be the best in anything, whatever you put your mind to, as long as inside you, you're being the best version of whatever that looks like for you. And I thought that was cool. I'm not trying to be like someone else, I'm trying to be the best in someone else's eyes. Like, what is that for you? And then you be that best version. That was really cool. I love that. She was cool. Um, now the other thing that I that I loved about Glory Making Banks was, and she had her business was to create a quantum leap. Like that was her major, her major thing. So she talked about goals. She talked about vision. She talked about you know all sorts of like your mission was really really key. Um, heaps of different things, and I think one of her. Her major, um, if you like this one, was you know, really, she said, number one was great leadership skills and good people are essential. So if you're believing in yourself and you've got a confidence, then you can take this anywhere. And she said, really, dare to dream, you know, really dare to dream. So I, um, yeah, Gloria Maple Banks had one of the most powerful impacts on me for that. Um, and I, yeah, I think she came from such an interesting story too, like her foundation of, of where she was in life. She, um, she got up on stage big time and did this huge poem, which was super cool, like all about herself. She had this like thing she says, which was really cool. And it was like a rap, a rap thing for herself. So she was just awesome. And she, you know, she was talking about being super bad and um, really love having more girlfriends. Go find others that are just like super bad like you. Like go find others that are, that you love to hang out with, you know. And she also said one key thing that I really loved was that network marketing is a, a key business model that is, you know, she really believes it's actually the safest way to become a millionaire. And I thought that was really cool. So, um, yeah, she was pretty, pretty awesome there. Um, what else? Yeah, that's pretty much it. And that was, that was one of my um, favourite people and she just, yeah, she had a real big impact on me. So you can go Google. She has lots of YouTube, Gloria Maple Banks. She's really great. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that's pretty much it, guys. I, that was a recap and... You know, Eric Worre really talks about going, um, driving your business, doing 20 and 30. He really um, offered that as like, just go for it. He said, what have you got to lose, you know? You, it's only a game. Just treat it lightly, play a game and have fun. That's really it.
If you want to learn about more 20 and 30 more, then you can go and watch his YouTube stuff. And um, yeah, and that's it, guys. Thanks for coming on. Jen, have you got anything else? I was just going to add one other point that I got from Eric Worry, which was um, immersion. So if you're wanting to change habits, immerse yourself in, in positive, uplifting information. And he said that's really how he created himself. He just listened to tapes before CDs, tapes um, all the time in his car. He just immersed himself in the messages from his heroes at the time and it just constantly went in until it came out. Yeah. Yeah. Immersion. Yeah. yeah. Immersion. Okay. And before we go, oh, by the way, you guys, you might like this little screenshot that I took. This was one from the event. And it was, it was interesting for me because this current week that I saw this quote and was, I was dealing with a, a pretty interesting situation with a woman and it just says a successful woman is one who can build a firm foundation with the bricks others have thrown at her. And I was like, wow, that's pretty huge. A successful woman is one who can build a firm foundation with the bricks that others have thrown at her. So, you know, be resilient, have a go. You know, the fear, feel the fear and do it anyway is one of the biggest things, say hey, Jen. Have a go. So, um, yeah. And that's, yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. So um, I can go on and on about this and share more and share more. It's really powerful, but we've, re we've gone four minutes past, so I'm really committed to us ending now. So thank you very much for all coming on. Super cool. And um, go for it. Go, go have a go of 20 and 30. I'm on it at the moment. It's really, really challenging and super fun. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jenny, for your awesome words. Thanks, Sunny, Emma, everyone else for coming on. Thank Bye. you.